NECA combs a dungeon and finds a lost toy line. Here's a look at the NECA toys Dungeons & Dragons The Lost Wave. Apologies in advance for the way I've got this review started out here. Simply just because the way that they're actually on their card, there's too much of a space down below here where I can't actually have these standing on a rotating turntable. These are a line of original LJN prototype figures that never saw light of day. LJN, yes, did produce Dungeons & Dragons back in the day, but these are the prototypes of one they never got the chance to release. NECA toys have found since the prototypes and have re-released these. Re-releasing isn't even the best word to describe this, as seeing as never these saw light of day, this would technically be the first release of these figures. And we're going to look at these individually, but one good thing by also doing it the way that I'm doing it right now, it gives me also the chance to show you guys the card that each of the figures are backed on top of. This one happens to be Kalak, the evil sorcerer. It does give you a little paragraph read down below of, if, of each of that individual characters. And one thing I also really liked that NECA did was they based their original logo on the way that the logo was for LJN back in the day. Flipping around to the back, advertises all the four figures, Pulverize, Skyla, Valkyr, and Kalak. Down below, there's also advertised figures, two of which we've already had a look at here, the larger 7-inch scale. There's War Duke, there's Grim Sword, but also releasing, or planning to release soon, is Strongheart and Zarak, which we will hopefully be looking at in upcoming reviews. These are, again, recommended for ages, uh, not, recommended, uh, not recommended for ages 0 to 3, as, of course, there are some small choking hazards, like, for example, I would say Kalak's Tiny Little Dagger. Pardon me, almost doesn't even want to open these up just because how cool they actually look on card. I might see if I can try to track down a second set of these so I can actually keep them still on, on sealed card. But that's Kalak. Looking at the card that comes included, of course, in this case with Valkyr, or Walkir. On the back, I thought for a second, it does say Valkyr, but right here, oh, it's just the it's just the reflection of the V. The V kind of then reflects onto the, uh, the little clamshell here, and it does actually look like it's a W, but it's Valkyr, the good warrior. This one comes included with a sword, comes included what looks to be some sort of crude axe, and also comes with a shield. That might even be a mallet, but the way it's designed, it kind of looks a little bit like an axe. Again, the card is on the back exactly the same. We are also going to be looking at... This one was always the one I found the most interesting, Pulver Eye. Almost as if it had a second eye, you could have called it Pulverize. And I'm sure that's obviously the play on words that they wanted to go with. This is the larger Orc High Chief. And again, you got some really nice artwork there on the side of the card. And then, of course, the last one, only in the sense that we will be looking at the packaging of these. I don't know if they're going to be still the same order when we're looking at the individual loose figures. But then we also have Skyla, the evil wizard. Smaller, it seems, than the other three figures we've already had a look at. But again, it has, some, again, really nice artwork there on the side. A little read-up down below there uh, of the wizards, at least, of Skyla. And then again, like the packaging on the back is exactly the same to one another. So what I'm going to do, reluctantly, I'm going to open these all up, and then when we come back, we're going to get a closer look at the figures all loose. What I tried to do in the hopes of not actually destroying the packaging was I did cut the bottom of each one of them, just enough that I could lift it up and pull the tray out. So if I do decide I want to put these Dungeons & Dragons figures back in the packaging, which I'm leaning more towards yes... I can easily then put them back in the tray, slide them back in the card, and short of maybe me telling you guys well in advance that I did do that, I don't think anybody would be any bit the wiser, unless you look at the bottom of it. So we're going to move the packaging out of the way here. Let's go ahead and grab the tape measure. I did my best to try to get them in somewhat order of at least the tallest to the smallest, and we're going to start then with the smallest on the end here, which of course is Kalak. Let's grab the tape measure just to see how tall these figures stand. On average, the smaller scale figures are going to be about the same size to one another. They're about three and a half inches in height, I would say, or they're going to be about eight and a half centimeters tall. Then though, for the tallest one, Paul Verai, if we go right to the very top of his helmet, then the figure is about five and a half inches in height, or the figure is going to be about 14 centimeters tall. Each of the figures come included with quite a lot of accessories, with, I guess, really Kellogg being the least amount. He only comes included with, again, his scepter and tiny little dagger. They all have the means somewhat to hold the accessories, although some of them hold them a little bit better than others. Why don't we start first with maybe this side of it, and we'll work our way across. So the accessories that come include with Kalak, you get yourself a tiny little dagger. I really like the look of this dagger quite a lot. I don't know if you can hopefully see it, but it seems to be some sort of gargoyle or monster head on the top of it. Kind of looks a little bit like a terror dog from Ghostbusters. Speaking of Ghostbusters, though, it's kind of cast in a more slimier green plastic. The plastic itself has a little bit of give, but it's not an overly rubbery accessory. 
The figure also comes in clue with an equally cool looking scepter. Would you consider this a scepter or a staff? I always still have this argument that if something's on the end of it, it makes it a scepter. Some would say that a shorter version of a staff is a scepter. Not that it really matters. Anyways, we get ourselves like a dragon head that sort of has this, I don't know, demon head there in the middle of it. But you can see the, there's a dragon head at the top and the wings are a little further down from this. Again, like it's it's a fairly rigid plastic that they've used. There's just a little bit of give, but not enough to really say it's like a rubbery kind of material that they would have used for it. You can take the accessories in all the cases and store them into the figure's hands. So let's go ahead and just attach them into Calic's hands. The staff, actually, really, to be fair, all that, all the weapons, for Calic at least, sit more looser, unfortunately. The figure also does have a gimmick that we'll talk about also in a moment. Oh, wait, we don't want to do handle side first. We have to learn from the lessons of Homer Simpson. And we'll go ahead and attach it in place. But he does hold the scepter, but just because the scepter is so much longer and the gimmick is going to kind of wreak havoc a little bit, I guess it does have the means to store it in both of his hands. I did say, though, the fact that the figure comes in clue with the gimmick I'll just go ahead and remove these for right now. All of the figures, it seems, except for Skyla, have, if you look at the back of them, I'm going to lift it up for here for a second. You can see, like, there's a little lever here. When you press the lever, uh, it does move the arms forward and back. It's obviously harder to do here with Calax simply just because he's got a cloak over top of it. The cloak is sort of more of a felt material, and they've stitched nicely an outer red trim. It does also have a matching, well, not quite a matching red. This one seems like it's a little bit more of a darker, vibrant red. But he also has a, a red collar there on the top of his head. For all intents and purposes, I suppose you could probably take the hood off. The cloak off underneath, or revealing underneath, you get all this cool little detailing that unfortunately gets lost by him wearing the hood. If you were to, say, slide this off, which, let's see if we can actually get this slid off here. I don't want to do too much damage when it comes to these figures' outfits, but if we were just to, say, slide this off here for a second, let the man breathe a little bit, this is basically what his body would look like underneath. He's got, like, a purple kind of tunic, but he's got all these interesting-looking snakes and lizards and stuff crawling all over his body, which, again, unfortunately gets lost when you end, end up having the hood on him, the cloak on him all the time. You can see a little more of how the gimmick works. Just pressing the button here on the back does swing his arms forward and back, and the figure doesn't have any other articulation. I mean, yeah, you can't bring his shoulders out, but then it does a weird thing. <laughs> a weird thing when you then press the lever on the back of it. It looks like he's, I don't know if he's doing a dance. What is he doing? So embarrassing. Head sculpt is really good on this one. In fact, it's actually one of my favorite head sculpts and probably one of the reasons why I did want to start the reviews with him first. I like the long beard that they've given him. Sort of looking like Santa Claus. I guess this is what Santa is doing when Christmas isn't rolling around. He's conjuring up spells, complete, of course, with his cloak. So there is go. Oh, and actually, let's look at the articulation. Now, this figure doesn't have articulation in the head. There's a couple of other examples as well where the figure doesn't have head articulation just because, again, like his beard and the back of his hair is all sort of built into the body. But you can't at least move the arms out. They've got these old, outdated... Well, again, back in the day, this is the way that figures would have been, would have been posed. But you would have had these metal pins that basically run into the shoulders. That allows the arms to move out. And you can somewhat move them forward and back. But again, if you start to move them too much you usually end up kind of clicking the joints. And I definitely don't want to be damaging any bit of the posability options or any bit of the gimmick options here. And the figure does also have leg articulation, so you can move those forward and back as well. The figure doesn't have any peg holes on the undersides of his feet, but that's what we get with Kalak here. Nice looking figure, though. Part of me really doesn't even want to put the cloak back on him just because, again, like, while it's nice that the fact I'm guessing the original figure would have had this also as well, there's just so much lost detail than when you have the cloak over top of his body. On to now the next figure, Skyla. Skyla is the hardest, unfortunately, when it comes to getting her to stand, just because she's got a very small footprint. What's interesting, though, is unlike Skyla, uh, un unlike Calic, I should say, Skyla doesn't have or does have peggle on the underside of her feet. Only one, just on this side right here. So while she has a harder time to stand, I suppose you could technically use yourself a display stand. The hardest thing would be, of course, to get yourself a display stand that has a small enough peg, because this one does have a pretty small peg. She does have, again, sort of the same kind of cloak idea. But the thing about this figure, if I just move it down here for a second, she doesn't have a little lever on the back. And it might have something to do with the fact that the figure's frame is a lot smaller than the calic we looked at before. Head sculpt's really good on this one. She's got these silver, long silver locks and a little, I should say so little, a demonic horn helmet on top of her head. It's kind of more of a headdress, I suppose, than a helmet. She doesn't have any articulation in the head just because the head, again, is molded to the rest of the figure's body. You can move her arms. This is one thing, unfortunately, well, while Calic didn't have it, she doesn't have a gimmick, so it's a lot easier to move her arms back and forth, although they are really tight to move forward. 
She does have a felt outfit, although this one's a little harder to kind of get, thing, get things detached. She does have a way to detach the belt, it seems, on the back of the figure's body, and then from there you can just take the cloak off. But I feel like the peg for how small that little clip would be, if I take this off, it probably would be wreaking havoc for me, at least, to try to get this back on her. But she does have, like, again, an outfit underneath it. I'm probably just going to leave it on, I think, to be fair. But I do like the outfit on this one. Now, she does have a couple of, again, accessories. She has a cool little crow. The crow doesn't have any paint at all, but it does have a little clip, at least, that you can clip it onto the figure's wrist. So we can go ahead and just bring the figure's up, arms up, for example. Really tight. Really tight on her shoulders. And you can take the tiny little crow and clip it on her tiny little wrist. And if she had the means to actually turn her head, she'd be able to talk to the crow. The crow's probably the only one that's listening to her. The figure also comes included. A staff, a scepter, you can decide. Let me know down below. But it's made of a blue plastic. Again, like there's no give to this. So be careful while bending this. You'd hate to really have this snap. There's a little red on the end of it. Now, I don't know if that's just detailing or if that's supposed to be blood. The kind of way that my warped mind works. I would like to think that that's blood. But she does come with like a little scepter. She does come speaking with small things. A tiny little dagger. Look at the size of this thing. Luckily, at least for Skyla, though, all the accessories that she came included with came inside, of course, the tray, but then there was a little tray covering to it as well. So when it comes time to, say, put these figures back in the packaging, I don't have to worry necessarily that the accessories are going to go, go swimming around inside. The figure also comes included with a slightly larger version of Dagger. And just to show you the difference between the two, it's kind of a little baby Dagger. That's kind of like a more grown-up, older brother Dagger. I don't, I don't know. But they're all sort of cast in that same caramel color plastic. And then the figure also comes in close. She seems just to like daggers. She also comes with this version as well that gets a little bit of paint at least this time around. Silver on the blade. And then the actual hilt is kind of a little more of a kind of a red color. All of the accessories can be held in her hands. So we go ahead, for example. Let's give her one of the daggers. I mean, seeing as she has enough of them. Just go ahead and fit that into her hand. There we go. And hopefully not drop the crow. Don't drop the crow, whatever you do. Go ahead and clip the crow then onto her arm. Actually, you know what? What we'll do is we'll leave them off right now just because I did want to show you guys the articulation. I didn't want to drop the crow in the process. Okay, so when it comes to Skylar's articulation, I already mentioned the fact that the head is already built to the body, so you can't do much of, the, much of anything with that. But you can move the arms forward and back. You can move the arms out because, again, like she has no gimmick on the back of her body. Legs also move forward and back. That's it. There, there, there's a little bit of wiggle out, but it's mostly just a forward and back motion. That's all you're going to get. Putting her down here for a second. And again, her footprint is so small. Just getting her to stand seemed to be the hardest thing. Just getting this review all set up. Just getting her just to stand on her own was the hardest thing. Maybe I'll just have her sitting down. She'll have she'll be sitting down having lunch for the me in the meantime. Moving then on to Valkyr. Not Walkir, Valkyr. A nice looking figure again. Like this one does have again the gimmick on the back of the figure's body, so you press the lever down. It doesn't seem to move as freely, for example, as Calic we looked at before. You can kind of just move the arms forward and back. And that's about it. I find if you push it too far, or sometimes too much, it seems to lock the arm in place. There we go. That moves a lot easier. Maybe it just gets a little hung up in the shoulders, because at one point it was working fine, and then when I started the review, of course, I was getting these little sad little swings. Yeah, you can see kind of where the arm gets locked up a little bit, but at least it does have a working gimmick. Now, for his accessories, just to put again the figure down here for a second, it does include a, a very very thick shield. I mean, look how thick this shield is. I would imagine the amount of plastic that would have had to been utilized in order to create a shield this thick. But it's got some really cool detailing there to the top of it. It doesn't look like it's... Maybe it was painted. Probably may have started a different color of plastic altogether, and they would have gone and painted it with, you know, again, a little bit of silver paint. I say a little bit of silver paint. That's a lot of silver paint. The figure also comes included. Have we decided yet what this is? I guess it doesn't really cut necessarily, so we can rule out the fact it's an axe. If it's a mallet, we're going to go with a stone mallet. The mallet looks like it's been painted in brown, for the handle at least, and then the stone portion, as crude as it may be, has been painted in a more matte gray. And this, this can, of course, fit into his hands. Clip this into his hand like that. And, of course, that works then heavily with the gimmick, which, again, like the gimmick doesn't always necessarily work with Valkyr. The figure also, like I said, does have that shield, so you can go ahead and attach the shield on his other hand if you want to. And you sort of just bring it around. Well, you you know how shields work by now. The shield sits honestly a little more looser, and the way the thickness of it kind of resembles more like a trash can cover than an actual shield. The thing that the figure also comes included with as well, let's just go ahead and put that down for a second, comes with a broad sword. 
The sword, similar in fact to the dagger that we got with Skylar, is painted in silver, and then you've got the red handle there, and that can also fit into the figure's hands. I honestly would prefer to have him displayed with the shield, but just because the shield sits so loose on him, I think I might instead just display him with the sword and the hammer. That's what he looks like with both in hand. Remove those for right now, at least. There is also a secondary place that you can store the sword. Can you see to the side here, just by the belt and the bandolier, there's a little loop. Take the sword, and you can slide that in there as well. It would mean then awkwardly when he goes to sit down and lean against anything, he's always going to be poking the sword against whatever he's sitting against, but there is at least a place to store the sword if you wanted to. Detailing for this figure, it's actually a really nice representation. I say representation, I mean, what are we really basing this against? It's a really nice, it has obviously a very dated look to it, which is the one thing I really like about this line so much. Articulation, once again, on this guy. He looks like, for all intents and purposes, like I'd be able to rotate his head. You can kind of see there's a cut clearly there right at his neck, but I can't move the head, and nor do I want to fight it in case I happen to break it. Again, you can move the arms, the elbows at least, elbows, the shoulders at least, have a hinge joint so you can bring those out, and you can also move the legs back and forth. That's it. He has no peg holes either on the undersides of his feet, but again, very heavily influenced by the gimmick, which for unfortunately for the case of Valkyr doesn't always work very well. It's working right, fine right now. But it may then lock in place and I might get these little less than interesting swings. Go ahead and get him this stand at least. He stands a lot better than the Skyla. And then finally, onto the tallest figure, Pulveri. <laughs> of that name. I think I just chuckle every single time I say Pulveri. For the figure's accessories, uh, Pulveri comes included with a shield, but it has a detachable, it has a detachable spider. The spider itself does look good. But when you put it in place, it doesn't sit properly into the shield. Like it just, it sits, obviously if I was to tilt it upside down, the spider would just fall completely out of the web shield. I suppose it's supposed to be like this, but it doesn't sit well enough, I feel, in place. There must be a real reason as to why this is a separable piece, probably just by the way they had to cast the plastic. The web does look good. It's not completely see-through web either. There are a few little areas you can see that have a little bit of blue plastic peeking through. But again, like you just take take the spider you just clip it in place and you just hope it stays in place a cyclops spider like i didn't already like spiders the nice detailing also done to this as well got some furry brown down below here while the rest of the legs still remain kind of more of a dark shine, slightly shinier black you can also see the fangs on the end of it are painted nicely in red this does fit then onto the arm and you're just going to bring the arm forward here for pulveri and just clip it onto the arm uh, the only thing I don't like about the idea of clipping the shield on is, first of all, the spider I don't feel stays well enough in place. You can kind of have, if you have it, well, if you have it right now and you don't move it around too much, the spider stays fine on the shield. The moment you start to kind of move the figure around, the spider then falls off of the shield. The other thing I don't really like is the idea of using plastic like this to clip onto then the figure's arms. I just feel like at sooner or later, I'm either going to develop stress marks or it's probably just going to fracture the plastic altogether. But that just clips again on the figure's arms. I guess you could kind of have it further down on the arms and just bring it up until you feel comfortable with that. And again, that stays okay. Spider just doesn't just doesn't stay well enough in place, though. The figure does also have a hole on the end of its hand. And there are a few little... Like, he comes with this, for example, that plugs in place. And it looks like it's actually a projectile. I'm not sure really what this is supposed to be. It looks like he's actually got a, a pointing tool, like he's given a PowerPoint presentation in the office one day. But the idea is you're supposed to push this in and it's supposed to, I'm just going to shoot this across the room. You're supposed to push it in and when you let it go, let it go, it's supposed to shoot across. Well, it doesn't even shoot so much. There's a spring, it seems, on the inside of the arm. But when you push it back, I guess it's supposed to spring. Maybe it doesn't spring all the way out. Maybe it's maybe it's just supposed to push it in. Yeah, that's as far as it. I was getting a little worried for no reasons whatsoever. But yeah, this uh, it's supposed to fit into his hand, but I guess it just doesn't fit well to the point where you can launch it across the room. And considering this is something I'm probably going to be putting back in the packaging, it's probably a good idea too. It doesn't spring across the room. The figure also then comes included with a pretty jagged looking sword. It looks less really like a sword and it looks more like a saw. It looks like he's about to cut some wood or somebody's bones. The handle in this case is molded in yellow plastic. The blade, though, on the other hand, is painted in nice in a nice silver paint. And this does fit in the figure's hands. Because he does have the, the gimmick, if you want to really consider it a gimmick, then on the other hand, he only really has then one hand to, to hold all of the accessories. He also then comes included with this battle axe. 
The battle axe carries the motif over of the spider. Instead of having a spider that falls off, though, you've got a little spider that's molded to the top of it of the double-sided axe. Nicely painted here in silver. Got yellow on the end, you got a little bit of red, a little bit of red to the top that, again, looks like it's trickling down blood. That's lovely. And the rest of the handle's all been handled here in yellow plastic. Now, there is a point to the end of it where I thought for a second it would fit into the hand, but the hand is way too small of a hole, and the end of the handle is too large of a peg, so it won't fit in that way. And there is no other storage place in this case to fit any of the other accessories on the pulveri. So you really only have one hand to choose from when it comes to displaying the figure. One thing also with this figure is that he does have a lever on the back. And because it's a larger size figure, it also means he has a larger size lever. Pressing the lever down does swing the arms forward and back. I just dropped the sword on the ground. I'm going to have to go retrieve that in a second. But pressing down the lever does swing his arms forward and back. So he has the gimmick again. Volkir has the gimmick. And, and uh, Kalek. Skyla is the only one that doesn't have it. I really like the look of this one quite a lot. It for looks at it for a second like you'd be able to remove his helmet. By the way, they've actually sculpted hair underneath the helmet, but it doesn't look like it is the case where I can actually take it off. Oh, maybe I can. <laughs> this is the first time I'm doing this. Take the helmet off. I really thought I was going to break it there for a second, but underneath, I'm sort of glad that I did. Well, not glad that I almost broke it, but at least by taking off the helmet, you can see that Pulveri does have fully sculpted hair. Probably wasn't a case that they've added any little glue on the inside of the helmet for the wrist. That obviously that would break. I think it's just the friction of having that on the figure for as long as it was, just taking it off initially. Boy, was I, I was worried there for a second. One single eye, as you can see, represented in the middle of his face. He's got some nice horns there on either side of his face as also as well. And I like the detailing to this guy's body. Uh, shiny black, of course, in the front, but they've got all these nice uh, yellow accents. Kind of a claw mark he's got on the top of it. He's got a little bit of yellow there on the, on the strap of his bandolier. And he's got all these cool little spider details everywhere. Figure's articulation on this guy, again, very on the more limited side. The head still feels like it should rotate, but I, I can't. I can't get it to rotate. The arms, however, though, do come out. No problems there at all. And you can move them forward and back. But again, moving them any bit forward and back just really is working with the gimmick. Or in some cases, working against the gimmick. Legs go forward. Legs, obviously, only going to get straight swivels for those. But nice, nice looking figure. Of the ones that we've looked at here, I think my favorite figure is probably Kallak. And even then, to say Kallak is my favorite, I think it's my favorite only just by taking the cloak off. I like the idea, at least, that you can take the cloak off if you want to display the figure without it. And I might just end up doing that. Although it will then mean I'd have to put this, I'd have to find a place to store this in the meantime. But I think that there's a lot of overlooked details by leaving the cloak on top of Kallak's body. All in all, nice looking figures. These, I think, are now pretty hard to come by. In fact, I think looking online for the prices that these things are going for, probably it wasn't a good idea, at least for me to have opened these. But of course, I did want to show you guys what these guys look like loose. And I think, by the way, at least I cut the package as best as I could. Again, bring back in the packaging here for a second, slicing the bottom of it like this. At least if I change my mind down the road, I'm going to store these away for right now. If I change my mind down the road, then instead of having these guys loose, I want to have them displayed in their card. I at least can slide them somewhat successfully into the bottom of the card clamshell. And then I can just put them on my, put them on my wall. I can hang them on my wall like that. But what do you guys think of these figures? Let me know down below in the comments section. Did you guys get the chance to get the new dungeons? Somewhat new, somewhat new. Dungeons and Dragons Lost Wave. Again, these were original prototypes that LJ never got the chance to release. But now thanks to the folks over at NECA have now finally been released. Though they may be a little harder to come by. Once again, speaking of which, speaking of NECA, I'd like to thank the folks over at NECA that did provide the sample of the Dungeons & Dragons Lost Wave that we got the chance to have a look in this review. If you guys enjoyed this video, why not hit it with a like? If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and on board to certainly see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and you're also turning on the bell notification. Got a little bit of time on your hands? If you do and you want to stick around in this channel a little bit longer, popping up also at the very end of this video will be a playlist of other things I've looked at for NECA in the past, the present, and in the future as well. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.